As you all join with us, uh, go ahead and turn in your Bibles uh, to 1 Peter. We're going to begin, begin a new study in the book of 1 Peter starting today. I appreciate you all uh, being ready to, to hop on with us and uh, appreciate you understanding me missing a couple of days. Uh, of our of our daily devotionals, um, uh, I also greatly appreciate all of your prayers uh, with the, for me and my family with the passing of my grandfather. We did have a very good service, and uh, it it was it was really the best of circumstances you could ever hope for under the under the circumstances. So thank you all very much. Uh, we're going to begin today, as I said, in in the first first letter that Peter wrote, 1 Peter. Uh, and today I'm actually just going to read the first line to kind of give us a brief introduction to the letter. And I want to tell you why I think it's so very important to us. Uh, so I'm just going to read, like I say, the first line where Peter introduces himself. He says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. As Peter is writing this letter, uh, this is Peter the apostle, the, the one who denied Jesus, the closest friend of Jesus, the one who uh, Jesus asks him, good morning, Rod, good to see you. The one who, who tells, who Jesus tells to Peter, he asks him, do you love me three times? And Peter, of course, uh, affirms his love. And then Jesus, Jesus gives his instructions to, to tend his flock, to care for his church. Peter is a man, he's one of my favorite characters in the Bible because he's such, um, he's a man that, that exemplifies humanhood, right? He's passionate. He's quick to respond, uh, sometimes right and sometimes wrong. He's, he's honestly one of, gives some of the most frank answers to Jesus uh, in the Gospels. He's, he's someone who makes big mistakes and experiences incredible grace and mercy from God uh, to do his work. His letter is one of the more difficult letters in the New Testament, to be quite honest, uh, because it answers the question. Some authors have called this, called this pro Peter's problem. He answers the questions of how Christians are to relate in a secular society. How Christians are to relate, specifically how Christians uh, are to relate to the Roman Empire in his day, or how Christians are to relate to a hostile government, how Christians are to distinguish themselves in the world. And we could look historically at a number of ways that people uh, have have encouraged the church to be different or similar or influential in the world. And we'll get into some of those as we walk through the letter. But some of the other themes that, that, that Peter brings out is faithfulness under oppression, living a distinct lifestyle, the reality that we are temporary residents in this world and we're made for for eternity, we're made for heaven and we're made for, the, for a different life. Peter's also going to remind us of the suffering that's not exceptional in the Christian life, but should be seen as normal to the Christian life. Now, I think this letter is applicable in every age, every day in every age. I think it's especially applicable to us right now because we're looking at some very difficult challenges that, that we need that, that force us to ask the question, how do we as Christians relate to the world around us? We're dealing with issues uh, related to this pandemic and, and everything that comes up with that. How are we supposed to relate to a virus and different laws and different restrictions uh, and different concerns because of that? We're, we're living in a world who, that's continually shaken up and rattled by racial uh, unrest and and. and uh, difficult questions that we as a country and a church have to answer. How are we supposed to relate to things like Black Lives Matter uh, as Christians? We're living in a world that, uh, that's facing persecution and war and, and uh, limiting of freedoms on so many different ways. How are we as Christians supposed to relate to that? And even us in the United States specifically who are facing uh, uh, an upcoming presidential election. What does that mean for Christians when we have some issues uh, on one side of the argument that are, that are so clearly opposed to Scripture and even on the, the far extremes of the other side, we can find other discrepancies and difficulties and, and, and an opposition to the Word of God. How do we respond 
when we don't find anybody that speaks for us on the ballot. Peter is going to help us uh, dig into some of these issues. Peter is going to show us, as he writes to a church that's, that's facing physical persecution from the emperor Nero, as, we, as he writes to a church, uh, he's writing to Asia Minor, really what would be today modern Turkey, northern Turkey, modern northern Turkey, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. He's writing to people that are coming out of their pagan faith, that are coming out of Roman society and need to know how to live as God's chosen people. That's what Peter's going to help us address. That's what Peter's going to help us understand. It, and, and the situation he's writing to is not exactly the situation we're in. It's different in many ways, but it's similar enough. And there's principles that, that, that make it evidently clear that no matter the challenge we face, no matter the opposition or the difficulty or the struggle, our response has to distinguish us as God's people from the world. If we respond in such a way that makes our, uh, our churches, our individual Christian lives drown away or mix in with the world around us, then we've responded incorrectly. We, might make, we will make mistakes, but as we seek to follow God, as we let Peter and the Holy Spirit direct us to how God wants us to respond in a world that's opposed to virtually everything we, we know to be true and right, we're going to answer the question, how do we live as Christians in a broken world? So I hope that you'll join with me. I hope that you're as excited as I am to dig into 1 Peter. I hope that you're ready for some challenging texts. I know they're going to be challenging and there's going to be questions that we're going to struggle with. But I hope you're ready as we begin this time and as we look, what does it mean to be a Christian in this world, in this life? Father, we come before you today. I thank you and I praise you. Thank you uh, for, for, for the opportunity to look at your word together. Thank you that I have uh, a ch this church family and, and this broader world on Facebook and Instagram, friends and family all around the world as we dig into your word. Help us to see what it means to be God's people in a broken world. Father, I thank you for the support that you gave me uh, with the passing of my grandfather and the great friendship and love from so many people. I pray, God, that you would continue to help us to stand as your church and as your people. Bless us as we seek to follow you and to live for you in a broken and a dying world. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks again for, uh, once again, for being with us. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I missed those, those couple of days that we didn't get to meet here uh, live. I missed being with you. I hope that you did as well. I look forward to beginning this new study. And uh, I love you all, and I'll talk to you tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Bye. Have a blessed day.